Okay, so welcome everyone and, and good evening and good afternoon. I'm very, very happy to see um, all of you here. Um, I know it's the weather is against us and it's so nice outside, but thank you to those of you who are here and I hope more people join. I'm very excited, very happy to have Charles with us today. Um, as you noticed, uh, and as I sent an info in an email as well, we had a change in the speaker. Signe had a, a last minute personal issues and Charles was so uh, nice to step in for her and, and replace her uh, on this. Charles is a award-winning designer, a writer, an entrepreneur, and uh, I'm very, very happy and thankful, Charles, for you to be here. Um, the floor is yours, and uh, you can begin your presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you, Linda. Hi, everyone. Um, so the topic uh, of the lecture today uh, is product development. Uh, so thank you for the invitation uh, for me to give the lecture. Um, the goal of the lecture today uh, will be to, to learn about the key elements in product development. I get to know some tools, tips, tricks, uh, and then I'll speak about some specifics in doing product development in Latvia. But I'm guessing uh, before we start, uh, you're all wondering who uh, am I? Uh, so I'm Charles Bushmanis. Uh, yes, I have a Latvian surname. Uh, I believe I might be the only immigrant uh, in the um, speaker lineup. Am I right, Linda, or are there others? Yes, yes, that's that's actually true. We the rest of, of the bunch is is Latvians, are Latvians. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm also an immigrant here. Uh, I'm originally from Switzerland, but I'm also French. Uh, I lived a bit in uh, Morocco, in France. I graduated from high school in Japan. Uh, I made my master in the Netherlands. Uh, and I think somehow uh, at some point in that process, I became a uh, Latvian uh, by coming here. Uh, what do I do uh, on a daily basis? Um, so with my uh, wife, uh, Elena, uh, yeah, and if, uh, the reason to emigrate uh, <laughs> is uh, <laughs> to immigrate in Latvia is here. Uh, and this is why I'm surprised to see more women than men here, because most of the immigrants I met so far are men. Um, so here in Latvia, I came first, it was in 2016, I believe, yeah, or around that, uh, that period. Uh, the first year I was here, I've been teaching uh, product design in the Latvia's Maxis Academia, to the Latvia National Academy of Art, uh, teach to bachelor student, master student, uh, some workshop to doctoral students as well. Uh, the year after that, I've been working with Riga Technical University, setting in place an innovation structure called RTU Design Factory. Uh, and uh, following uh, this, uh, what happened is uh, I worked with RTU in redefining their business incubator uh, and renaming it uh, Idea Lab in the process rather than Student Business Incubator. Uh, I since then left uh, RTU and we're working with, uh, with my wife and partner in crime in a company called Design uh, Eleva Elevator. Uh, I'm getting notice on the chat that, no, I did not come here in 2016, but in 2011. Uh, so yeah, I got mixed up in my own time. <laughs> so yeah, I'm here since 2000, um, 2011. And uh, yeah, we have this company called Design Elevator. We're doing three main things. One is product development or service product development or service development with clients, uh, ranging from a cafe to a hairdresser. Uh, on service side, uh, also policy design with state institutions uh, and also service with state institution. We're developing products. Uh, currently, uh, just looking at the table, which is on the opposite of me, I have there a glove project, I have there a speaker project, uh, a cube uh, project uh, as well in the, um, in the making uh, and more coming. And since a couple of months, we also opened a publishing house uh, as we published uh, kind of two, three years ago, uh, this thing, which is called Design Thinking Toolkit. 
is how do we pass also the method we work with as designers to people in a way that is easy accessible and they can replicate and we are focusing on publishing books people interact with so currently we have a project with illustrators uh, a child book so yeah quite a, a few funny things in terms of product physical if at any point you have questions you may ask them in the chat uh you if you can uh, i know that sometimes it's not always easy to express question in english uh with me you can also express your question in german in french uh as well in a chat uh if you so wish uh yeah so my journey a bit my, my experience i went from making things uh to make things happen so my i have basic education uh, i mean bachelor education in uh, in product design so uh, i studied in uh, switzerland ecal of one of the top 10 design school uh, at the time working really on product I mean, benches lamps urban furniture microphones uh vases uh we had project with nespresso hermes that was quite fun uh, but i always had this thing in the back of my mind say yeah i mean design is nice making object is nice but in the process of product development with the tool we have can we make more can we use tools for something else uh, i was back in, uh, in 2000 uh, uh in 2008 uh back then in uh in geneva and started trying to apply this to uh actually business development field uh so how to develop product how to uh, improve the business doing some human-centered design uh back then was the beginning of it and so we started doing it and then we discovered that and just went from there and as a as a company as a philosophy of work uh we have this design to elevate your ideas uh, because at the end of the day you know we are a design service provider uh, we're a product development service provider so we're not the ones who need to have the ideas but we're the ones who take your ideas and accompany you uh, to bring them further uh, with our skills and knowledge Oh yeah, I think you know, the, the skills again in making things, uh, I, I had a great time doing that and I, I'm still enjoying doing it and doing it. Uh, so yeah, uh, here's a, one of the first projects I did in Latvia, uh, gained an award uh, for this. And um, the um, product is a microphone. Uh, and we had a, I'm going to tell you the story of the, the client. Uh, it's a client who came and said, hey, we have that microphone, a stage microphone, you clip on and uh, you are on the stage, you don't need this big bulky thing. Uh, everyone says it's a great idea, no one purchases it. Uh, so we have a lot of cases uh, that comes like this because at some point in the product development process, something went wrong. If everyone says it's a great idea, it's a great product, but no one purchases it um they wanted us to work on aesthetics uh we gently told them wait a sec uh, we're going to go through a, a design process and really do a user-centered approach let's design the experience and from the experience we redesign the product uh and turned out uh, at the end of at the beginning they wanted it to be the smallest uh and lightest uh, such microphone in the market we said not taking the project if this is a constraint you want and at the end of the project, it turned out to be the smallest and lightest such microphone in the market. Uh, we had a series of uh, roughly 70 prototypes until the, the product. Um, and yeah, to making things happen. So I think uh, the design methodology uh, and the design philosophy uh, we employed since, yeah, <laughs> actually since I'm doing design pretty much, um, we applied it to other things. And this is one of the, the projects I, uh, I applied it to. Uh, so when I mentioned I worked for RTU in developing the design factory, this is what design factory was when I arrived at the picture of the left, on the left, an empty space, uh, nice light, but storing old broken furniture. Uh, and design philosophies, okay, well, you want to develop an innovation uh, center, so let's engage with people. Uh, so I set up broken chair, broken table uh, on the place you see on the right, a small flag <laughs> on the table or a name tag, design factory, Charles Bushman is, uh, and just started engaging and talking with people. They were just, who's that guy? What is he doing there? Um, and from there on, 
uh, we opened a second prototype, you know, room in the basement. We got some 3D printers from a local manufacturer, said, hey, we have this, everyone's welcome to come as a way to engage and listen to people. And uh, fast forward uh, some years, uh, a couple million euros invested in the structure. We hired, uh, by the time I left, we hired, I think, six people uh, full time in the, in the project and had over 1000 square meter uh, of space. Uh, and recognized as the coolest place in the university, uh, <laughs> part of every tour. Um, yeah. Yeah. Then, if we're looking uh, at, you know, what is uh, a product, what is a service? I think it's it's basic component. Uh, it's an experience. Right. How, as a customer, how, as a user, do I receive that? Uh, and this, this experience does not necessarily apply to, to microphone, to uh, reading a book, to uh, uh, using a pair of scissors or a keyboard or a computer. Uh, that can apply as well uh, to services. You know, how do I renew my resident permit in Latvia? Uh, how do I apply for unemployment? Uh, <laughs> what is happening uh, in the boarding uh, of an airplane. So yeah, we start always uh, with the experience and we associate that experience with values. What are the values that are passed through here? You know, if I'm going to, to the courts, uh, I need an experience that shares value. If you know, this is very severe, this is serious. Uh, there are processes uh, that we follow. Uh, if I'm going uh, to a music festival, uh, then the value might be very different, uh, you know, having fun. Or if you go to Lampa, the values are openness. Uh, so it's really designing this experience, this value, this attitude, this way of life first. And the product or the service is a medium uh, for that, uh, for passing that. Um, yeah, and when I said, you know, design uh, for, for us is not a result. Uh, it's not how things look uh, at the end of the day, because that is an absolute minor uh, amount of work. Uh, I've seen some previous lecture, you know, that kind of development early stage, uh, understanding the, the context 90%. Yes, it is really like this. Uh, and I think for us, it's uh, the aesthetic aspect of it is maybe 5% of the work. And the vast majority is really getting to getting in the context, getting in the user, making a product that makes sense, validating the, uh, the ideas, collecting feedback, prototyping. Uh, and then, you know, making the adaptation. Now you have a product, you're happy with the visual, make the um, design for manufacture or design for, uh, for execution uh, in the case of service, but really engaging with the, the different stakeholder. So yeah, if you have a question anytime, uh, you have a chat box here, 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 I don't know where uh, on your screen. Do not hesitate. I can spend a bit longer on, uh, on any slide if you need. So yeah, and when we're talking about these design methods, uh, there is a little bit of a false sense that only designer can apply. Oh, they're complicated. You need to follow this. I think design is also an attitude, being open, engaging people, uh, and yeah, talking with them, sharing who you are. Uh, and if you have the right attitude, it doesn't really matter the tools, the exact tool you use, but you're going to get there. And we also transform all these design tools in a very easy way uh, and accessible. So very often what we do is we have a client coming, hey, uh, how about you do this exercise, this exercise, this exercise, then you come back and we talk. So we also try to engage them in the process. So on the long run, uh, with the product, it becomes easier to talk with them. We can be more efficient in the discussion, in the development, and in understanding each other. Because not only we need to be able to talk the language of the manufacturer, the service provider, uh, the context, but we also need to tell people what is our own language. Uh, and I think that is the key, and regardless, regardless of your business. If you're a business uh, in a restoration business, for instance, and you're talking with graphic designers, you need to be able to communicate to the graphic designer what is the language of your business, uh, what are your values, who you are. Uh, and they need to be able to understand that and to have a communication. And that always takes a bit of time. 
Um, I'd like to share maybe three uh, three examples uh, of uh, of SMEs, uh, you know, small product, one person uh, starting uh, their business uh, here uh, in Texas and uh, in region. The, the first one uh, is called Beko. Uh, it's 150 meters from our office, so I did not find fire to, to fetch that one. Uh, and it's a uh, trattoria. Uh, so it's um, yeah, Italian restaurant, uh, kind of more home cooking uh, type food, fresh pasta, pizza, very simple menu, qualitative ingredients. And they also have ice cream. And, what happened is uh well also he is immigrant she she is latvian uh same situation than uh, than many uh, many here and he was missing this food this experience uh from italy and they decided hey how about we build something and we share that uh, with people we share our culture we share our experience and i think a big part of product development when you start a project it's about sharing your passion uh with others uh, so you know when we write uh, when we wrote that uh, that toolkit uh it's passion when we do the microphone is is the passion for designing the this experience uh when we're working currently on the, the children book and other stuff it's really you know, we enjoy doing that and we put a lot of ourselves in it so yeah sharing who they are culture offer an experience and you really go there not only for the food but because the place is different i mean you can buy, buy salam and uh, and cheese if you want um the second one uh also 150 meters from our office uh again uh it's coincidental it's not on purpose uh it's called melna school uh this is a business started by a latvian kaspars and Kaspars, he's absolutely passionate about coffee. Uh, he's a coffee encyclopedia by himself. Uh, to the point, if you want a coffee, a specific coffee, and that it's not on the menu, you just ask, he makes it. Uh, yeah. Uh, and also sourcing uh, a product and creating, you know, that very intimistic. Uh, cafe experience uh, for him, I believe, was important to be able to share uh, a bit this uh, in a Latvian introvert way. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, sharing that. And I, I think this is the best cafe I've been in in Latvia. Um, just a disclaimer, I'm not paid by any of these to say that. Uh, <laughs> this is my own, uh, own opinion on that. Um, the third one. Uh, third example, uh, that one is actually, uh, I think, 30, 40 kilometers from, uh, from Cessis, uh, and it's, it's Zeltini, uh, and it's uh, a guy uh, called Aigar uh, uh, Lausis, who was a landscape architect, uh, and he went, uh, I think, across China uh, with bicycle, uh, camping there, uh, worked in, uh, in Dubai, and he came to Latvia a couple of years ago. That's actually a project he started developing in China, but then he came to Latvia uh, because he is Latvian uh, and keeping uh, developing it here. Uh, and it's kind of a yeah, houseboat, camper, bicycle, uh, a strange uh, mix uh, that is quite interesting. Uh, and so he came here, prototyped his project here, uh, managed to raise funding here. Uh, I don't remember it was uh, 300,000 uh, or something like this, uh, I feel. It has investors in um, Estonia, uh, so from Estonia for this project, and already pre-orders. So yeah, uh, so also a really, uh, really nice guy. I think we're meeting with him and a couple other people discussing design product development every, uh, every other month. Uh, so yeah, kind of developing that informal network with people. Uh, that's maybe so one thing that, that is very important. Don't be afraid to talk about what you're doing with others, sharing your ideas uh, with other professionals. Because, hey, let's face it, if they steal your idea, if they want to beat you, they need more passion and they need to make it better. Uh, so the risk is relatively low. Uh, and if they compete in the same business, uh, then it all comes down in reduction. It all comes down to personal contact uh, and your ability to, to engage people. So, uh, yeah, with all that, um, 
where to start. Uh, yeah, I, we said the, the base of a product uh, service is an experience. Uh, so we need to understand cultural value, personal motivation of user. Uh, what is interesting for them? Uh, I'll let you answer in the chat or open your microphone and, uh, and answer, but where would you start or where have you started uh, to do that with your business idea if you have? Um, question in chat. M many people are afraid to share their ideas as they might be stolen. Uh, in reality, it's it's not an obstacle. Uh, no, share your ideas. Uh, the point is the more feedback, the more you engage people, the more you communicate your ideas, the better you become at communicating them. Uh, and I've, actually, the, the risk uh, is about not sharing them is a bigger risk than sharing them because then you keep everything secret for yourself. Uh, and at the end of the day, you rely more on luck uh, than uh, actual uh, product development process. And I think in a product development, there is one thing you don't want uh, is luck. Hello. Hello there, thanks for your presentation. Uh, I would like to share one of my ideas and uh, to get some feedback from you uh, as a professional of your job. Um, well, uh, one of my ideas is to open a catering company uh, which provide uh, food, which has, uh, you know, like, uh, which provide with, with uh, different various cultural backgrounds, for example, uh, so Muslims uh, face such a difficulties to find halal food. Uh, some religious Jewish uh, want to kosher food or vegetarian, some vegan food. And uh, sometimes when we go to some restaurants or uh, even if there's a big companies or uh, which use some catering company, uh, they have these obstacles and can't provide uh, uh, for like satisfy all their employees or if it is a school international school all their students uh, because of such kind of issues uh, you know like uh, uh, even like uh, for example some muslims uh, can eat meat but it should be slaughtered properly and it's it need to be a halal food so uh, uh, it it is uh, when uh, when you study, for example, when you kids study in international school, and they said, that, oh, we don't have this opportunity. If it is a catering company providing food, we don't have this opportunity. We may just provide some vegetarian food. But um, you know, some airlines provide different kind of uh, mm, uh, food, uh, like. Uh, as I mentioned before, even for little children, uh, some other food like which may uh, like they which may be proper for them as per age and uh, other stuff. So, like taking into consideration all such kind of cultural backgrounds and uh, getting proper certificate because some uh, even vegetarian people sometimes have some suspicion whether it's really vegetarian. Do you don't use at all like you properly cook or okay. something like that? Uh, Sveta, I, I, think, I think I understand the, the general idea yeah, of your yeah. business. Um, I, I have to cut you here because I'm sorry, this is not a business which competition. Uh, I will use, uh, I, the lecture is not finished, but I will use your idea, your project for the, the next two slides. Okay. Uh, and build on that. Um, but yeah, sh short things, focus. Uh, <laughs> I think the first thing is focus, choose uh, choose one point. But yeah, wh when we say where to start, so where do you start with, uh, with such an idea? Uh, I mean, the first thing is who are your customers? How many customers do you have? Uh, is there a business there? How to attract them? Uh, you know, luxury industry is very few customer, very high margin. Uh, and then you have the mass market industry, a lot of customer, very small margin. So uh, it's not necessarily about having a lot of them, but having the, the right one and knowing how to how to reach them. 
Um, one of the, the first tool we use uh, in our projects is really working on this user profile. Uh, so either we conduct interview or we shadow people and so, but we build these different user profiles, uh, which represent a certain group of people based on our observation on interview. And getting to know what motivates them, what value they adhere to, um, what is their environment like, really helps us to build a product uh, in an appropriate way. Uh, so for you, uh, in your case, you have your halal food uh, for people. What is their environment at home? Uh, first question is, do they have a freezer? Is their freezer big? Do you sell frozen uh, or not? Uh, where's the premium? Uh, what do they value more for? So you have all these questions you can ask yourself uh, in, into your customers. Uh, if I also now take the example of the, the microphone that I presented earlier, uh, when we looked at the, the customer environment, the customer environment was more high-end type of environment. Uh, so that meant the design direction, it had to be a product, you know, you could wear more as a piece of jewelry that they would not be ashamed to wear. And this is where we identify one of the big issue with design, uh, their previous design. Uh, we had a lot of issues with the, the user scenario as well, but that was one of the the main drawback they had. So yeah, and making these user profiles, uh, these different user profiles, this is something you use throughout the project. Uh, so at different stage in the project, or when we want to reflect on what you do, we try to impersonate these people. Hey, now I am uh, you know, Yanis Bixe, uh, <laughs> 52 years old uh, person working in uh, Varam. Uh, I like bicycling. Uh, how do I feel about that? Would I use the product? What are the drawbacks? So it's a way also to, for ourselves to criticize our own project really quickly. Uh, and the information you collect here with this user profile and create here is useful later uh, as well for marketing and communication because it gives you some key elements to, uh, to reach them. The next tool uh, that is quite interesting to use uh, is a customer journey. So what is the customer journey for someone uh, looking uh, to purchase halal uh, food in Latvia or in your market? Uh, starting with, yeah, how do they even know you exist? So yeah, I'm looking for halal meat. How do uh, they even know I exist? Uh, and then how do they come to me? How do they purchasing? Do they need to come in the shop? Is it delivered? What is that experience there? What is happening uh, after uh, they have um, purchased it? How do they come back? Is there a fidelity thing? So have the whole experience from before they know you to what happens after the, the sales is completed. Uh, and this is important to do for two types of user. Uh, always the one you know who, in your case, made, constantly cooks halal uh, and is really looking for a lot of food, a lot of meat. And maybe for the person who is only looking for not everything halal, but a couple of things or kosher. Uh, and have this different experience because not all customers are the same, but by working the extremes, uh, then you're sure you have an idea of, uh, of where the middle is as well. What you actually see on the, the screen there is um, in the picture, it's a customer journey we need. Uh, we did with a large international company. Uh, they have five five thousand plus employees. This was with their HR department, and we mapped the en uh, entire employee journey. So we had two types of employees. We had one uh, warehouse worker uh, who was completely new in the job, uh, and one office worker who was working there for a long time. Uh, so that we made this profile, and then this profile we used them uh, here. Uh, again and we went from okay how was the experience how did they first heard of the company how was the search for the job how was the application process uh, interview growth in the company and then the, the harvesting you know the moment they leave the company do they leave because they cannot grow what are the reason for leaving do they leave because they retire do they leave because uh, xyz what are all these different option branches what are the issues how do they feel where is space for for improvement and I think if you can map your user journey, uh, it's, it's a good start. And keep in mind, a user journey with your product is a constantly evolving document when you're building a business. 
what you have uh, the first time you do it is different than uh, five days later, than a month later, than two months later. Uh, and having such a user journey also allows you to focus. One question is, do I focus on catering big companies? How big companies are procuring uh, halal kosher food? Or should I focus on uh, individual people? Who are my, I mean, if big companies order from uh, Oreca uh, companies, can I compete with them? Is there enough demand, enough market? Where do I myself source the, the food? Um, yeah, uh, in short story, uh, when you say they cook vegetarian, this is something I can completely rely to because at some point in my life, I organized a, a lot of uh, camps, training camps for intercultural events. And uh, at some point, I got tired of having you know, to prepare the uh, without pork, without meat, without fish, without this, without that. Uh, then every event camp I was organizing was just asking people for allergies, and the entire week would be vegetarian. Uh, I had a fantastic uh, friend who was cooking incredible Indian food for <laughs> for that time. We just placed, we just uh, advertise it as a cultural experience. Uh, yeah. But for the small joke, uh, apprentice, it already worked really well. Um, then another tool uh, you can uh, then you know when you have this, you understand your user, you have an idea of the experience. The next logical step is to uh, to prototype it, uh, and without prototyping, without engaging user, we're asking about. Shall I share my idea? <laughs> Will it be stolen? This is exactly where you share your idea. And this is why you share your idea. Share it early. Share your early prototype. You make something with Lego. And it's, it's important that it doesn't look impressive. If I show you something too impressive, you will tell me it looks great. And I'll be, yep, thank you not helping if i share with you something as the, the lego you have there so yeah it's interesting have you thought of doing this and this and that uh, i'm sure every single one of you here faced in front of this would not mind you taking a piece of paper drawing something on or moving the, the duplo around uh, to say hey how about this have you thought of that i would feel more comfortable in that way so uh, this is one thing and when we're talking about prototyping, that's a mistake I see too, of, too often happening is people are trying to make things that look too nice. And when it looks too nice, you cannot collect feedback uh, from user. So the not looking nice of a prototype has actually a lot more value than a nice looking prototype. Uh, and when you have engaged people on this prototype, engage the same people every time you have an increase in the resolution of your prototype. You know, maybe that's the first version of the restaurant. The next version of the restaurant is you are really getting them in a physical space, testing the ordering uh, thing, having a kitchen somewhere else in the city, cooking everything, and then you bring it to the table. Uh, to say, uh, do, uh, do everyone likes uh, cow brain? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, or uh, cow stone. Uh, can we build a restaurant business around that? Uh, because, you know, the example of cow brain and cow tongue is because cow tongue is a delicacy in Latvia and uh, beef brain, uh, I think it's a delicacy in North Africa. Uh, Sveta, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When, when I'm saying, you know, you can prototype a restaurant, that is a prototype of a restaurant. They really try. Okay, well, I'm ordering things. They are testing here the ordering process. They have a scenery in the front with a uh, you know, plate full of stuff, but the real thing is happening hidden in the kitchen. So they are testing things. And you don't need to prototype the entire thing and just prototype you know, the dish for the taste. You can prototype the ordering thing. Uh, you, you can prototype the way to communicate. Uh, in some cases, if it's a service, you can just make a fake brochure. Give it to people with an email or phone number and you see how many phone calls you get uh yeah or a website where you know subscribe for update when it will be available uh and this is one thing you can do or in your case if you want this halal uh food in uh in latvia you can just try to have a facebook page uh start a facebook page advertise the facebook page halal food uh halal food group riga 
see how many people join the group. That gives you an idea of the, the customer. And then you can engage them here, uh, see what is happening. And you know, uh, maybe you have a representative from Air Baltic connecting you with a, a message there. Hey, uh, tell me more, where can I get everything? No, this is a prototype. A Facebook page can be a prototype. A way to test an idea. I mean, the real goal of prototype is to test that idea. It's to validate um, assumptions. I'm sorry, I would like to ask you, so you suggest to focus on one thing uh, rather than various things. For example, uh, what is the idea? Because there, there, there is halal food, some restaurants or uh, some you know, so, small places. Uh, which has halal food, but I I would like to uh, provide like to, to such a catering company which provides uh, various food, not just halal, but with any kind of some like cultural background, like general generalize these and you know like when, whenever you fly with Turkish Airlines, so there, there are you can choose many kind of foods like. A halal, kosheri, veg vegetarian for children, for some uh, some other sections also. So, like such kind of thing. I, uh, I'm just putting one big warning on, on you, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think I can. Uh, you have a lot of restaurants in Latvia offering pizza and sushi. How do you feel about that? J just reflect five ten seconds about the, the idea of having a cold chain of food, sushi, which is something Japanese healthy and uh, pizza, which is a bit more comfort food type thing. Does that fit together? Uh, you know, also, if you're looking for a good restaurant, uh, when you're going in a touristic location, always look for the restaurant with the smallest menu, because that is the one which will have good food, fresh food. Uh, so focus, get a focus, you know, maybe it's not one business, but then it's five, seven, 10 business, you have, uh, you know, a group of uh, ethnic food, then you have that uh, Ethiopian restaurant, and then you have that uh, Kazakh restaurant, uh, and then you have the American or no, the Canadian uh, restaurant serving Putin. Uh, <laughs> and so, but if you have a restaurant serving a uh, Kazakh specialty with Eritrean specialties with South African, it's a mess. It's not clear for people. What is important is people can read your business. And also keep in mind, you have only so much time you can spend on it. So if you divide your time between absolutely everything, you do nothing. Better start small, start focus, and grow based on what you learn on the interaction with the client. You know, if you, if you start Turkish food restaurant, uh, and then, you know, a lot of people come in, uh, in your restaurant and say, hey, great, uh, do you know about these Moroccan specialties? That's something you could, you could make. And then I'm okay, well, um, I'll give it a try. And then, you know, uh, or you start Turkish, everyone asks for American. So you change the restaurant, you make American one. Uh, and then everyone comes to American. Hey, yeah, great, you, you have this Ethiopian one. And it's still coming a lot for the Ethiopian. So maybe you open a second one. Uh, if you want to go to a restaurant business. If it's a shop, uh, then it's different. But you need a way to test simple ideas. If your idea is too complex, people won't respond to it. Um, the example of the microphone, uh, the microphone had 18 different functions uh, when the client came uh, with it uh, to us. And depending how you press the button, what you do, etc. And uh, the key is, you know, you take the product and say, okay, what is good for the client? I mean, the, the client literally needs a four function, on, off, mute, volume up, volume down. This is all they need. Uh, they don't need to control uh, <laughs> how many Bluetooth signal to where it goes. Um, uh, they might need a simple way to do pairing, but this can be described in a book. Keep the product simple and readable. If it's confusing, you lose client. Okay. And maybe you know, a last piece uh, of advice uh, regarding funding. Uh, I think you all know that the current economic situation in Europe is interessante, uh, as they would say in Latvian, uh, with 
pretty much a crisis in a lot of business. What we're seeing in product development is the, our client uh, cash reserve shrinking. Uh, we're not expecting a lot uh, of new product development projects in the coming year. Uh, but what we're also seeing, working uh, more on the policy side uh, of things, uh, governmental aspect, is that all the European funding that is allocated will need to have that green sustainable component. Uh, so th this is also something you could build in the fabric of your business, uh, that sustainability aspect uh, of it. Uh, by sustainability, I don't mean, uh, you know, putting solar panels uh, on the roof uh, uh, for your production, but really in terms of the product. How do I source uh, my material? Uh, you know, where my wood come from? Does it travel from China or can I source it locally? Uh, who are my supplier? Uh, an example of a product we're developing here uh, in the office currently is a printed product. Uh, not only we're sourcing paper uh, and we're very specific with what type of chemical we don't want in uh, and what we allow, um, but also we're looking for a partner who can print with vegetable ink. So we're pushing it, uh, we're making an experiment, pushing it as far as we can uh, with this product. Uh, and you know, maybe having a certification cradle to cradle, or I don't know later. I haven't thought of certification, it's not the reason why. Uh, but yeah, it's how far into sustainability can we push the product? And there, this will give you a, a competitive advantage. You know, what do you do with the, the leftover of your wood? Do you uh, kind of make pallets uh, uh, for heating? Um, do you recycle thing? Uh, do you design your product to be easy to dismantle and to reassemble? Uh, if you're working on a service uh, as well, you can make service sustainable. Uh, if you can deliver a service remotely, uh, meaning you know people don't have to travel to you back and forth, etc., you save a lot of money on people uh, gas, or depending what the, the service is as well. So even in service, you can do that. In a restaurant, you can do it as well. You know, what do you do with the, the food leftover? Do you compost it uh, and build salad on it? Uh, do you raise uh, uh, pigs uh, in the backyard? <laughs> Sorry, Sveda. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, what do you do with this? And these are all questions you can ask yourself. You know, do you grow your own herbs um, on the roof? And all of these aspects can also become uh, later marketing commercial argument and not only argument for access to funding so this is what uh, we uh, we observe um as so i'm reaching the, the last uh, part of the lecture uh, and after i can spend a bit more time on a question uh, if you want uh now being an, uh, an immigrant uh, I think maybe I can talk about uh, having worked also on product development in different countries. Maybe I can talk about what I see uh, is different between uh, Latvia and, uh, and abroad. Bear in mind, uh, most of the experience I have abroad in, uh, in product development are physical product with a couple, a little bit of work in service and consulting, but uh, are really based on, on physical product. Yeah, uh, if we're looking at businesses in Latvia, uh, the vast majority of them is focused on the, the red ocean, competing for the same clients, uh, trying to be cheaper, trying to deliver faster. And a lot of it relies on personal connection and building trust. And also you currently have, uh, and you had uh, historically a lot of policies encouraging export, 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 where you value the turnover uh, over the, the profits. Uh, yeah, so better, you know, if you export uh, 50 million uh, euro of things and have a uh, 50,000 euro profit, uh, you're seen better, you have better access to funding uh, than if you're exporting for uh, 5 million and having 2 million euro profit. Uh, so this is, uh, I, I mean, the example is extreme, the numbers are not this, but that reflects a bit, uh, a bit the idea of, uh, of policies in the past year. It is slowly changing. Uh, but there's still he, there still is a very big incentive on export, um, rather than uh, trying to connect um, local businesses with uh, local services. 
So they try to, if you are a service provider, they try to export your service abroad rather than expand your, your network here. That's the, the type of support that is available. So if you're based on export, LIA is a, is a great contact point for that. If you're more for local markets, then try more municipalities. Uh, yeah, what is different in Latvia? Uh, I think, again, that, that comes for, uh, from the policy that this export in Red Ocean means a lot of companies uh, are producing for cheap. Uh, and you have a lot of companies producing for cheap. You have a few companies uh, active in the very high end of stuff. Uh, but in the middle, it's difficult to find the, uh, these middle point uh, companies. So high volume, low price, low volume, high price, uh, and kind of the middle is difficult to find. They exist, uh, but they are more complicated to, to get in touch with. Uh, and there are cases where we could not find partners in Latvia. So you can also go to Estonia and Lithuania. Uh, I think in general, the, we, we generally consider the, the Baltic countries, uh, the three of them, as one in terms of uh, regional area where we try to source a uh, partner. We prefer Latvia where, when we can because travel distances are shorter and we're in the middle, but in, there are some cases we, uh, we're looking uh, in the neighboring country. The next difference um, is that uh, in Latvia, there's little investment in R&D. Uh, so we don't see uh, many companies investing in r and I mean, there are notable exceptions. Uh, Mikrotik, for instance, is investing a lot uh, in R&D. Uh, you have uh, iRobot, who has in Latvia a partner who is investing a lot uh, in R&D as well. Uh, you have, uh, what is this, this engineering company? But you have some who are investing a lot. But when you're looking uh, from the side of the producer, manufacturer, uh, very few people actually invest in R&D. The consequences of that is that it makes it very difficult to try to experiment, to try to do something new with them. So, hey, uh, can we try to send blast that food and then do this and this and that? So, no. Uh, so you're very likely to encounter uh, a no there. So, but it's worth taking the time, finding the, the right partner. But if we're looking also for the, the reason why, people maybe here are not so uh, keen to experiment and try. Uh, I think that the fundamental reason for that is this. Uh, Latvians are introvert. Uh, it takes time uh, <laughs> to engage with them, to build uh, a trust relation and to make them comfortable criticizing your ideas. Uh, but the moment you're able to build that relation with them, the moment you're able to engage in constructive criticism, uh, then they're willing to experiment. They go in your direction and you can have a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, if they say no, it might be because they're introvert. Spend the time, effort uh, to develop the connection. Uh, yeah. And then not only they're willing to try, but also you get better quality uh, and they're willing to spend the extra effort with you. So yeah. I think this is a, these are the, the main main point here. Don't be afraid of Latvians. They are just introvert. Uh, yeah, the key takeaways uh, of, of that lecture is you have three things to, to take away. I would say, you know, develop an experience before you develop a product. Really. Uh, you're not buying products, you're buying experiences. Uh, you're not buying a bicycle uh, because uh, it has two wheels and to go around. You're buying a bicycle because, hey, with the mountain bike, I can go in the forest uh, or I can have this fun with my family uh, and so on. And there are a lot of products in your life, whether or not you realize it, it's the same thing. Engage user. Uh, no point keeping your idea secret. Uh, all the reason in the world to share it, to get feedback, to make them move on. And also build sustainability in your business, not you know, as an add-on element. Uh, you know, if you have a restaurant, think of what you do with the, the food left over. Uh, where does your, your food come from? Do you partner maybe with the, the local company? What do you have around you? Uh, if you're producing a service, uh, look at the entire service uh, life cycle. Uh, you know, typically 
do you go to the client to repair something or do you have a way to ship it to you uh, which would be more sustainable uh, or if you're to provide uh, consulting services uh, on you know how to fill application form for uh, whatever uh, <laughs> grant or so can you do it remotely uh, or do you need to travel to people or where is the mix there uh, and how also do you engage your employees uh, in sustainability uh, example of that is there is this company uh, in switzerland called infomaniac which is actually our web host uh, web hosting company we uh, in which we host all the, the websites we have and they give 200 euro uh, a year to their employees who come to work with a bicycle plus they pay for a bicycle uh, so, you know, there are these things, uh, these company values in sustainability that transpire uh, throughout. Uh, all their electricity is green. Uh, they avoid using battery. They use a kinetic energy thing. But yeah, all these little things, incremental, uh, that you can do. Uh, now, uh, I'd like to take one minute uh, for you to, to reflect on this, uh, and then we'll open a uh, question, uh, comments, uh, objection time. So uh, shut my microphone off for one minute now. Remarks, comments, objections? Thank you, Charles. Uh, do we have any questions or comments or objections? I, I have a question. I think he, he already said that, but I didn't catch it. Is if you have a service, it's not like a product, how can you make it more um, to sustainable. sustainable yes sustainable okay um i can use ourselves as a as an example where the service we provide is product design and development uh, how can we make uh, ourselves more sustainable I mean, we have uh, 3d printers in the office because we use them uh, quite a lot for prototyping uh, we use a material that is biodegradable so the, the old prototype we just compost them uh, at the end of the day um, when we're designing products with clients, uh, we don't necessarily advertise that to our client because that scares some <laughs> off, um, but we're designing it with cradle to cradle principle in mind. So trying to find local material uh, and design a product in a way they are easy to dismantle. Uh, so in our activities and how we do things. Uh, now, let me ask you a question. What type of service or what service uh, is your idea? Okay, my idea is like to help uh, these people that is, um, they have a product, it can be handmade needs, like small people, let's say your aunt, she make this uh, handmade soap. So my idea is to, to help them how they can sell this because for me, it's like really easy. I know we have exit, we can, you can create like a website, many forms of put it like in the market, but maybe for for these people, this kind of people like 50 years and up, not everybody, but let's say that people, they don't they don't know how they can promote the what they do. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the question is, do you design the product for them 
where you just take their product and sell them? No, I just help them to, to put the product like on the market. Okay, you know, one, one of the, uh, the things that is actually the most complicated uh, when you sell online, besides if you don't have the technical knowledge to put things online, is um, how do I ship it? Uh, and I think in the, the entire shipping, uh, sh uh, shipping the product uh, uh, process, there, there's a lot of things you can maybe build in your business uh, as a support to them. Uh, I'll try to show you one example uh, that I have here. It's, uh, it is also something we're, we're reflecting uh, about in, uh, in here. We're shipping a couple of products. Uh, I don't know if you, you know, you probably all know these envelopes. Okay. Yeah, padded plastic envelopes. Uh, and currently, uh, we have padded paper envelope. Okay. Uh, so it's you know, trying to, to replace the products, finding alternative, um, and so on. Uh, but what is interesting is the product, uh, finding a more sustainable alternative, uh, it's not necessarily always biodegradable. For instance, this one, uh, the Design Thinking Toolkit, since uh, we published it, uh, that's my third one. And the reason this is my third one uh, it's because I'm utilizing it a lot. Uh, I'm taking it out uh, a lot. And uh, the, the cards uh, for the, the toolkit, uh, they are uh, actually, uh, if you see that they are paper and you know, they tap or I have them on the, uh, on the table, uh, they move here and there. So I printed one on, uh, on plastic, uh, one version on plastic uh, for test. And okay. reflecting, okay, do we make a version like this that would eventually last longer? So, yeah, I mean, really explore things uh, around in the, in the duration. But in your case, uh, you can work on the, the packaging and shipping and, you know, having deals with shipping companies. Uh, I know that DHL has kind of a green option or something like this, carbon compensation. So you have these ways also to, to build that into uh, the fabric of what you're doing, while it also allows you to get higher margin on your services because your clients who you help making things on Etsy would pay less for shipping than if they arrange it yourself. Uh, and you take, uh, you take your margin there as well by okay. just being a middle person. Okay. Thank you, very helpful. Welcome. Uh, do we have someone else with a question or a comment or an objection? <laughs> yeah. Lady, I see, I see you turn on your camera. That sometimes means that people have questions. No, you just wanted... Not, the, not this time, but it was very, very helpful uh, presentation and a uh, lot of useful information. So thank you very much. Nice. Uh, and I mean, if you're wondering how do you say remarks, comments, objection in Latvian, uh, it's Yalta uh, Commentar Very nice. Do we have someone else with a question, or maybe someone who wants to share their um, experience, or maybe they have a struggle and they don't know how to proceed with their idea? Maybe you want to share your reflection on these three points. Yes, this is the, the, the moment to. I mean, suck my brain. Uh, <laughs> to, I mean, a, anytime you have a speaker, a question time, use it to, uh, to suck people's brain because that is free consulting. Uh, uh, later on, you pay. And uh, I've seen the, the list of speaker you had. Uh, you had some pretty yeah pretty great people uh that uh i think uh, linda must have really good contact and relation with people to have attracted them <laughs> i know i know i really do feel, i've said this before i really do feel very happy about our speakers um yeah, and i i mean i'm i'm impressed about the the lineup yeah uh i i would like to uh make a comment uh Probably 
from my own experience, uh, I could uh, help uh, a little bit the, the lady who wants to make the halal uh, service food. Because uh, for a long time, uh, we tried to make a similar uh, Mexican, uh, uh, not restaurant, but uh, food service. And what I could advise, especially uh, for Latvia, that uh, Mexican is still very ethical. So it's uh, not an easy sell. Uh, so maybe halal is also very much specific and can be expensive. Uh, I, I, I will uh, recommend uh, maybe one of two approaches or maybe the two of them. Uh, don't sell it as halal but sell it as a uh, healthy food that is casually halal, but that it's healthy. And uh, it's, the market is going to be larger. Et ethical meat. Yeah, something like that appeals a more <laughs> sustainable, no? but, uh, something that it's more appealing to, to the people and that uh, make the people willing to pay uh, because uh, if uh, maybe people is not going to be willing to pay uh, 10 euros for a dish that is a Muslim dish, but is going to be willing to pay 10 euros for a, a dish that is sustainable or that is healthy. And the, the other uh, idea is the uh, check about the uh, ghost kitchens or cloud kitchens. This is a, a very good, uh, uh, and not, not very modern, but a new approach to use the, the kitchen, especially now that so many restaurants are struggling in the, in the current economy, to use the, their facilities. Uh, meanwhile, they are not working or uh, meanwhile, they have a chance to, to share the, the, the kitchen so you can work uh, with them in their kitchen, rent the kitchen, rent the kitchen uh, in the morning, for example, or, or late in the in the evening, and prepare your food, and uh, and uh, dis distribute uh, through them. For for your investment is not so uh, crazy big at the beginning, at least. Yeah, um, and also just a, a comment on the restaurant industry. Uh, if you have a service side or a client contact side, you can only employ people who have who are fluent in Latvian. Uh, otherwise, you risk fine. Uh, I have a friend who got big fine for that. So yeah, he learned yeah, from yeah. his fail. <laughs> Thank you so yeah, much the, the, the language as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing uh, your experience and thank you for valuable advice. Yeah, happy to help. Yeah, I mean, one, uh, one more thing to go to do, go and make it happen. <laughs> Like Nike, right? Just do it. <laughs> uh, I think it's not just do it. Because it, it. It requires quite a bit of effort. And, uh, Without just, uh, uh, do it. Yeah, it's do it. Uh, <laughs> and also, I mean, don't, don't leave too much space to chance. Uh, really discuss, talk with people. Yeah, there are so many ways you can test and prototype ideas. And I think, uh, Sveda, there are a couple of things you can do. I mean, use Facebook uh, in your case because the, the clientele you're looking for, uh, I think you find it on Facebook, uh, expat. Communicate, I mean, create a group, communicate on the expat group, see what comes out, test different ideas uh, because it's cheap way. It costs you nothing and you can validate assumptions, ideas before moving on because otherwise you know you invest thousand two thousand euro and you lose them and you know thousand two thousand euro in switzerland in germany uh it's fine uh in latvia uh it's four months salary you're absolutely right you know like um there are actually in my mind several ideas that uh within this platform with, the, with each speaker i try to share some ideas and uh, just to find which one is will be proper for me like with my resources with my ability with my like energy with my time everything you know like i'm trying to 
Uh, this time also, as always, as in the previous one, I've got very uh, valuable advice uh, from you and uh, other participants. Thanks so much for this. And, you know, like I'm trying to formalize in my mind that which will be suitable for me. There are actually some other ideas in my mind, but I will, I will think about them. I don't know. I, I don't I don't know that do we have enough time uh, to share some other ideas or not, but just I, thanks I, for this. For this, I, <laughs> for just, this you know, system. one thing. When we started our company, uh, company design elevator, we had our first business uh, was to produce high quality design with disabled people. Uh, over time, it evolves. Uh, we're still a social enterprise. Uh, we still have a social goal uh, before profit. Uh, just now, it's designed to elevate others' ideas and uh, uplift the, the local economy and proactively engage people. Uh, and also work in, uh, in policy making and support that uh, to really uh, bring things in a, in a better direction. But yeah, no, we're not officially registered as one because it's too much paperwork to give every year for nothing. But uh, yeah, you know, the idea you start with is maybe not the one you end up with, uh, but you need to start somewhere uh, and, you know, constantly reevaluate what you're doing, put yourself in question. Uh, because there, you know, there, there's a point maybe you need to kill your idea. Uh, and there's a, a kind of a, an expression for that. It's the, the fighter jet syndrome. Uh, if you build a fighter jet, you're 90% completed. Uh, you're missing 1 billion to complete the program and have the, the prototype, but your product is already outdated. You should not finish your, your program. Uh, but because you're so close, a lot of people would just finish it. And this happened over and over and over again uh, with these. So yeah, don't get into the fighter jet syndrome. Evaluate what you're doing and adapt, steer, move uh, if meaningful. We also have a question from Mara. I can, yep. I can see Charles read it. And I think this one, and maybe one last question if we have it. Um, before we end for today. Okay, um, Mara, do you hear me if I am talking or should I write my answer? Um, I'll wait for you to, to write your answer that. You hear me, okay. Uh, engaging university level student in, in cross-cultural learning without regard, requiring travel as part of the, uh, the experience. Um, I think there's some great examples that, uh, that happened during uh, these COVID times. Uh, I think last year, March, April, uh, there were so many hackathons, uh, global hackathons everywhere, uh, where people were actually uh, having this uh, intercultural, uh, cross-cultural learning exchange uh, without necessarily traveling. So yeah, uh, question is, do we advertise it as culture? Uh, maybe it's one question uh, I have. I have no answer. I only have questions. Uh, do you advertise it as culture? Uh, is it a specific activity? Um, and also engaging with uh, universities, uh, I found out that it's very easy uh, to engage with students organization uh, on that and use their, their communication channel. So I had uh, working in RTU, uh, several very good experience there. Uh, I hope that uh, helped. Uh, yeah. Okay, if you have a follow-up question, Mara, uh, or a comment on that, feel free to, to write. I'll read you. Alinda, uh, floor is back to you. Yes, yes. No, I just, because uh, I see people leaving slowly. We, we've, ha we've lost a couple of, of uh, the participants. I just want to Remind but, I mean, you. it's important to enjoy the sun uh, and the no rain. I know here. we're all <laughs> like one foot out the door already. I know I feel the same way, and and even more because of that. I'm so thankful to to everyone who was here with us today. Uh, the Latvian spring is against us in some way, but then again, it's so nice to have such nice weather finally. I think you really appreciate this when you live 
in a country with four seasons. But um, so our next session is May 18. Uh, it's about branding. So it's very close. So today's Thursday, then Tuesday again, and then we'll have like a, a bit longer break because it will be 27th. So it will be like a week and a half. Um, so thank you so much to everyone. Uh, if we don't have any more questions, then I'll say, um, yes, we have a comment from Mara. Um, so uh, thank you, Charles, for being with us today. Yeah. Um, um, maybe a last thing. I, I don't know if every any one of you is in a CESIS uh, uh, region, uh, because if any one of you is in CESIS region with the municipality here, uh, we have a support instrument for uh, consulting uh, businesses, and there are also local grants we can connect you with. Uh, so it does not necessarily have to be in thesis, thesis uh, because I'm the judge <laughs> there, but it, it must be connected with, with the region and bring a benefit here. Yeah, so you can think of ideas that include not only Riga, uh, but, but, but goes on yeah, into I mean, other regions. I, 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 li I lived in Riga, I myself from the countryside, I had to leave Riga for the countryside. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and uh, also that is one thing, maybe a last thing. Um, if you're looking for partners in product development, physical things in Riga, uh, people tend to be very stressed, want to make things, uh, you know, either they put you at the back of the line, it's way easier and you get better quality if you go a bit outside Riga to communicate with people uh, for prototyping, testing and stuff, uh, because it's easier to communicate, it's easier to engage, uh, and also they're a bit more relaxed. Yeah, because I think Riga as a capital. <laughs> I see Mara. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> that, that sounds like uh, I experienced that. Yeah, because I think Riga, even though it's small for like in a global scale, it's still a capital and it's still the biggest city in, in Latvia. So it is the busiest and it is people uh, are maybe more. I think it's more, uh, I, I see the same thing happening uh, regardless of the country. I think it's more a matter of um, you know, culture. I mean, city culture or countryside culture uh, and attitude uh, rather than uh, the mean capital okay. uh, or Latvia. So uh, it's really city culture versus countryside culture where on one side, you know, you value uh, money, uh, how do you look towards other? <laughs> and in the countryside, you value maybe a little more time uh, yeah. and pleasure and, and relaxing life maybe enjoying life so um i will say well let's all go out is it countryside or city side and enjoy uh the sun and the spring thank you so much to everyone thank you charles one more time it has been a pleasure um, i hope everyone enjoyed today and took the most of it um, I will be staying until the end if any one of you have a question, just like always. And um, if you have a question to Charles, uh, you can see his uh, web website there, but I also have his email. And if Charles, if I have your permission, then I can upon... And my my email is also can... written on the website, so oh, <laughs> you, yes. you can just requires the effort to go on the website. <laughs> so if you have a question to Charles, then then you have to go to his uh, on his website. Very good. Well, thank you so much. And or to Cessis. It's nice city to visit. Cessis. I know. I know. Very good. <laughs> good suggestion. OK, well, thank you so much, everyone. And have a beautiful afternoon. And I'll see you all on Tuesday. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Um, Linda, yes. can I send you the presentation a bit later today so I can uh, run to kindergarten? Oh, of course, yes. I will be sending like an update tomorrow, so that, that's good. Okay, so you, 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 need, you need it for uh, tomorrow morning. Good. Yes, that's, that's great. And also the invoice, um, once you, once you yes. have it, just send mm -hmm. it to us. And, and... You know, I, I received your requisites, so I'll, I'll take care of that. Okay, well, thank you for the opportunity. Yes, uh, thank you so, so much. Yes. It, was, it was a pleasure. Have a nice Bye. evening. Bye-bye.